Chapter 366, Transplanting Chives In the Lujiazhai village, Lu Shu was leisurely lounging on his deck chair, plant the chive sprouts evenly. From Little Fury's Distress, plus 399. In front of the courtyard that Lu Shu bought, Little Fury was holding a bunch of chives in its arms, planting them into the soil. The chives were even taller than itself. Little Fury wrote on the soil, Why don't you plant? Lu Shu shot at a glance, Do I look like a farmer? From Little Fury's Distress, plus 666. Little Fury had learned most of the words. But just when it thought it could finally embrace its hard fought liberation, Lu Shu returned with even more work. By right, sewing was the best way to farm chives on a large scale, but Lu Shu could not find any vendors selling chive seeds. Thus, he resorted to the current method. He himself did not have to do the labor anyway. Under normal conditions, chives for sale should be cut at most six times. But Lu Shu wanted to know how chives would grow in a magically rich land. In any case, their life cycle was short, so they did not have to worry about the waste of time. Lu Xiaoyu had brought Naughty Pig and Big Cat into the mountains for some fun. Although Little Fury planned to join them, it was forced to stay and sweat away for Lu Shu. Before it could convince Lu Shu to make Big Cat plant chives together, the latter had already run far away. At that time, Lu Xiaoyu had become familiar with the Heavenly Network members stationed at Beimeng, and she loved to receive snacks from them. Every time when she returned from the mountains, Naughty Pig would be fully loaded with snacks on its back, as though they had just gone through a round of snacks hunting. Little Fury suddenly could not take it anymore. It called in a dozen of its minions, and gave the farming duty to them. Suddenly, it realized the benefits of having some followers. To Lu Shu's surprise, there appeared more than 10 Class F rats in a month after Little Fury disseminated diluted refresher fruit juice to its rodent minions. Was the effects of refresher fruits so powerful on the beasts? In the past, Lu Shu was already impressed with its ability to improve one's aptitude. Honestly speaking, though, Chen Bailey's and Li Xianyi's breakthrough was not solely due to refresher fruits, but mainly their own accumulated power. They had been trapped at the bottleneck for a long time before the restoration of their foundation. After the repair of their foundation with the help of refresher fruits, they wasted no time in ascending to Class A. But now, Lu Xu was wondering, if all Little Fury's minions could climb to Class F, how scary would it be? He decided to add more investment in Little Fury some time. After the assessment, Lu Xu had more than 3 million yuan, over 60 magical stones and an extra standard sword at his disposal. Usually, he would find a platform to sell the stones, but most black markets in the central region had been exterminated. With so much cash in his pocket, his interest drifted to opening a hotel again. As the only household in the vicinity, he had more than enough land. After all, sooner or later a practitioner's school would be established there, so why not take care of their accommodation first? It seemed a promising business. Currently, Lu Xu was hiding in the mountains only to avoid Li Xiao, who had cast aside his school duties and become a frequent visitor of Lu Xu's house trying to persuade Lu Xu to join him for his adventure overseas. Li Yixiao was dead broke now. He could not sell his black dragon spear anyway. Despite his status as a prestigious heavenly king, Li Yixiao could not reap any monetary benefits from the missions, but Lu Xu seemed to be having luck all the time. Nia Ting had told him that Lu Xu was highly likely the person behind the Gungi black market incident and that the kid probably had all the money. At that moment, Li Ishia was pondering, his lack of money-making brains was precisely what landed him in such a poverty-stricken situation. For so many years, he had been walking on blades. Combats were his strength, but besides robbery, he knew next to nothing about earning money via other means. Although he lacked the brains, he could find someone with the brains. Li Ishia would seldom ponder about a question too which was why Nye Ting had mentioned Lu Xu when he assigned him the mission. However, since he could not come up with a logical explanation, he might as well give up his attempt. After all, Lu Xu must go with him. Li Yixiao was not a man of reason. 
When Lu Xu rejected his invitation, he decided to stay at Lu Xu's house. When he was hungry, Lu Xu also had no choice but to attend to his growling stomach. The next morning, all the chives in the magical field were ready to be harvested. More eerily, the ends of the chive leaves were as red as fire. It was a drastic difference from ordinary chives. There were villagers crowding around when Lu Xu stepped out of the house. To the natives, Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu were like aliens. Let alone the fact that the enormous alpha boar and the leopard cat were meekly following the little girl, many had witnessed how Little Fury planted chives the day before. In fact, they were aware that Lu Xu was a Daoyuan class student, but did the head not claim that there was nothing special about that piece of land? Why did it suddenly change after this student came? Thus, this student was the key. It was none of Lu Xu's concern though. The general rise in the number of new, magically rich lands could be a reasonable explanation. If he was really questioned, he could argue by saying he was of the sensory type, which enabled him to discover its magical potential. After all, sensory types were an open secret. Now, he had learned to hide the main secrets while covering himself with insignificant ones. Guard the house and don't let anybody steal our chives, Lu Xu left the words and went out with a bundle of chives. He was heading downtown to look for any potential buyers for his chives. Nonetheless, his worries turned out to be redundant. With Naughty Pig and Big Cat around, ordinary villagers did not even dare to lay a finger on his land. In the past, there was a villager who came close for a curious look, but ended up being chased around the hills by Naughty Pig. Actually Naughty Pig did not mean to harm him either, it simply felt like chasing after people. Lu Xu had chosen the fine arts market as his location. Although the connection between a bunch of chives and fine art seemed non-existent, there were people trading botanic items, such as walnuts, gourds, and bracelets. But still, chives sounded like a total mismatch in this context. Lu Xu did not care about that. Did the Xijing Black Market not begin from a fine art site? And he was going to treat the chives as a new form of fine art. Chapter 367, Selling Chives The fine art street of Luo Cheng was situated in the old district. Lu Xu went there by bus. In the past, he held deep reverence for that industry. Just imagine, hundreds of thousands of yuan were flowing between the vendors and customers every minute and a single item could be worth a good sum. His impression remained unchanged until he paid a visit to the Xijing Fine Art Street. Lu Xu walked inside the place after he alighted from the bus. It was about the same as his expectation, with only some stalls in operation. On both sides of the road, there were antique-looking items and the most welcomed customers were the foreigners. But the times had changed. Nowadays, the vendor's favorite buyers were Daoyuan class students. At first, they were perceived to be smart, discerning individuals. But over time, the owners had noticed that the only difference between them and ordinary students were their physical power, not intelligence. Moreover, Daoyuan class students were actually even more gullible. The most typical example was that a fake, ancient jade, disguised in fluorescent powder was sold for over 50,000 yuan, while the product only cost the owner 150 yuan. With that incident as a pioneer, students soon became the best-loved guests. Every stall would be equipped with rare magical weapons, transforming the fine art street into the arsenal of the cultivation realm. Sometimes foreign metahumans would come as well. Deeply intrigued by the profoundness of the Eastern culture, they would always be fascinated by the vast range of magical weapons there. Not long after, a post appeared on the Golden Foundation, I never expected that the Chinese cultivation realm was so affluent. But within an hour, the man realized he might have been a fool. The vendor claimed that the gourd he bought would produce a powerful spirit, which could possibly breathe fire and water, and was even capable of saving a grandpa. At that moment, he himself could not understand what kind of special function that was. Why the need to save a grandpa? Afterwards, he found out it was only a scam. But the fine art street never accepted returns or refunds. 
coupled with the fear of the heavenly network, the man could only suffer the loss by himself. He was a legal tourist, who had informed the heavenly network of his entrance. But of course, he could not reap any benefits if he was involved in a local conflict. What if the heavenly network came when he was upholding his rights? Should he call an ambulance first? In the external practitioner's eyes, the heavenly network was a mysterious and influential organization, and Ye Ting's people earned the reputation with their sweat and blood. It was a universal situation across the globe. Be it ill or well-intentioned, it was hard to prove one's innocence after a foreign practitioner got into trouble. At a time of high tension, it was actually not in line with the working ethics of the heavenly network. The foreign metahuman in this case was only worrying too much. Lu Xu walked to the fine art street full of swagger, with his chives in his bag. Someone immediately called out to him, young man, are you here for fine art or magical weapons? Apparently, he was confirming Lu Xu's identity, whether an ordinary or Daoyuan class student. Unexpectedly, Lu Xu put on an enigmatic smile, I'm not buying. I'm selling something. Sell what? The vendor was surprised, did he bring some precious stuff? Last time, an old farmer came with a bronze sword. Just when it was thought to be a fake, it was sold for 12,000 yuan, and was later discovered to be a real magical weapon. That deal alone was enough for the seller to live a good life. The man was curious, let me take a look for you. What's in your bag? Lu Xu whispered, chives, the fine art. From Wang Kunbeo's distress, plus 299. He paused for a long moment. Since when were chives considered as a fine art object? Why? Your chives can sing and dance? Go away. Don't waste my time, the man waved his hand. Without a word, Lu Xu started setting up his own stall in the adjacent space. Once he took out his chives, the man drew a startled breath at the extraordinary redness, brother, was it grown in a magically rich land? The color was as bright as flames, capturing one's eyes and attention at once. Nowadays, such chives were sold in sticks, not kilograms. In the earliest days, it was sold for 80,000 yuan per kilogram, and was very well received due to its clear effectiveness in improving one's health, including promotion of digestion raising of spirits and suppression of sweating. It was especially popular among the rich in the sub-healthy state. Afterwards, the price plunged due to increased supply. To counter this, the sellers began the retail trade. As a result, one stick cost 100 yuan, affordable even for the masses. This had revived the chives market and the current market price was 130 per stick. However, Typical magical chives only had a tinge of redness on their tips, but Lu Xu's were exceptionally bright. How much is it, young man, the man asked, planning to buy one stick out of pure curiosity. In the past, a dish of fried chives with eggs had more leaves than eggs. But now, it'd be more appropriate to call it scrambled eggs with chives. Lu Xu threw him a glimpse, 200 per stick. No bargain. He certainly knew how good his chives were. Lu Xu would never fight an unprepared battle. Just when the owner was about to haggle over the price, two youthful students walked in, looking like undergraduates. Their eyes brightened at the sight of Lu Xu's chives. One of them squatted down and greeted Lu Xu in English, Hello. Lu Xu froze, how should he reply? Thinking for a few seconds, he replied in English, Hi. How are you? The person hesitated too, I'm fine, thank you. And you? In proper English, Lu Xu answered, I'm fine too. Where are you from? The conversation caught the onlooking man off guard. What kind of communication technique was that? The student pondered, I'm from China. After two seconds of silence, Lu Xu switched back to Chinese, then why did you act smart? From Wang Qian's distress, plus 199. From Mang Yunbang's distress, plus 166. Squatting in front of Lu Xu, Wang Qian was confused, what's wrong with greeting people with a hello? 
However, he had no intention to pursue further on the topic, how much are your chives? 200. If a man eats it, his woman suffers. If a woman eats it, her man suffers. It was an advertisement line that Lu Xu had wanted to use since a long time ago. Finally, after almost half a year, it was proven apt in the given context. But then, the two students exchanged startled looks, as if at a loss. Suddenly Lu Xu realized it was because his advertisement was not intense enough. After a total of five seconds, he added, if a man eats it, his man probably suffers too. From Wang Qian's distress, plus 399. From Meng Yunbang's distress, plus 499. Chapter 368, Family Search. Feeling offended, Wang Qian suddenly swung his fist at Lu Xu. Meng Yunbang immediately held him back, don't. We are here to bring our younger sister home, not to fight. So please don't cause father any trouble. Besides, it won't reflect good on you as a practitioner if the story of you hitting a commoner was spread to the south. Fine. For father's sake, let's go, Wang Qian finally calmed down. Lu Xu could sense that the two's abilities were both at the peak of class E, a typical standard of Daoyuan class students who were unable to break through due to insufficient military contributions. Lu Xu resumed his business. Based on the popularity of such chives on the Golden Foundation, he knew there were no shortage of buyers. Although he could have developed new variations of the species, Lu Xu preferred a less risky approach. If it was a smooth sale, maybe in the future he could stay at home waiting for his customers to collect chives directly from his house. How convenient! Regarding the safety of his chives and his magically rich land, Lu Xu did not have to be concerned at all. With the seal of lands in his hand, which self-conceited moron would dare to do that. However, 200 yuan per stick was indeed slightly exorbitant. But as patient as Lu Xu was, he sat in the fine art street for the entire day. Only those who have a taste of my chives will know how good they are, Lu Xu thought, and they definitely will fall in love with it. In the morning, Lu Xu's bag was filled with chives and at night, with money. He and Lu Xiaoyu had agreed to spend the night at their Xingxu Road house, and Lu Xiaoyu would be back after she fully enjoyed herself on the hills. On the bus home, a thought suddenly struck Lu Xu. What the hell, has Lu Xiaoyu's school term already started? He himself was excused from lessons due to his progress report, which caused him to totally forget about Lu Xiaoyu's school reopening date as well. No wonder Lu Xiaoyu had been so happy these days in the mountains. When Lu Xu was about to reach home, he saw three men standing in front of his door, two young and one of middle age. Unexpectedly, the two young men were Wang Chen and Meng Yunbang, from the unpleasant encounter earlier that day. Suddenly, Lu Xu felt that the road lamps in the courtyard were unusually dim today, as if a layer of grayish gauze had shrouded them, and his emotions too. His heart skipped a beat, as he recalled the young men's words in the morning. We are here to bring our younger sister home. Stepping up, Lu Xu inquired in a soft voice, Hello. May I help you? The middle-aged man smiled gently, his suit trim and his leather shoes shiny, Hello, boy. You must be Lu Xu, I suppose? Yes, I am, Lu Xu replied calmly. Honestly, he had no idea what mood he should be in. Generally speaking, it was extremely bad. Hello, I'm Meng Yu. May I know if Lu Xiaoyu is at home? I heard from the orphanage that she has moved out and has been staying with you. It took me great effort today to find your location, the man was very courteous, without sounding condescending at all. But he still made Lu Xu uncomfortable. In the past, Lu Xu used to chase Lu Xiaoyu back to the orphanage due to his own plight. But he never hated her. He knew he would not have done that if he had been able to give Lu Xiaoyu and himself a good life back then. But now, someone was here to take Xiaoyu away. Lu Xu had thought about it before. One day, Xiaoyu's parents might come for her, bring her home and provide her with a better life. He believed, at that time, that he would certainly wish her well if the day really came. Yes. He would. 
Now, however, in spite of the person's politeness, his voice was like a dagger in Lu Xu's defenseless heart. He was bleeding. He had thought so because he was poor back then, but now. Why are you here now, when I am doing my best to earn money, to give Lu Xiaoyu a life comparable to other girls? Yes. Xiaoyu will be back soon. Please wait for a moment at our house, Lu Xu smiled. There was neither rage nor sorrow in his heart, only peace. But he still grasped at the last glimmer of hope, how are you certain that Lu Xiaoyu is your girl? Meng Yu grinned, back then, I lost my money from a deal in the south, and Xiaoyu's mother could not find me when she was about to give birth. Without a choice, she put our daughter at the doorstep of an orphanage. Now, I have reunited with her mother and we have confirmed the clue in our daughter's swaddling clothes, a slip with her name, Meng Xiaoyu. We also know the birthmark on her body. We came here after all the confirmation with the orphanage. There was another wrench in Lu Xu's heart. He was aware of the existence of the slip, and Xiaoyu had changed her surname from Meng to Lua all by herself. But what birthmark was the man talking about? You. Meng Yunbang interjected, frowning, Lu Xiaoyu is not your younger sister. She has nothing to do with you. Please don't question this so much. I already wanted to teach you a lesson in the morning. Instantly, Lu Xu turned and fixed his gaze on him, second lieutenant of class E. I'm afraid you have no right to talk to me in such a manner. If Xiaoyu has confirmed that you are her family, I will not stop you but that's after it's done. Here, now, I am the boss. At that second, Lu Xu's eyes were burning fiercely, like a young demon, whose enemy's blood was dripping down his chest. Seriously, though, Lu Xu had killed a handful of people. Lu Xu flashed his major military ID in front of Meng Yunbang's face. All three of them were silenced at once. They did not conduct any thorough investigation of Lu Xu, hence they had no idea who Lu Xu was. But, normally, a 17-year-old teenager should be an ordinary student, or even a gangster, perhaps a thief? After all, many kids from the orphanage ended up like that. They thought patronizingly. But the reality was beyond their imagination. Meng Yunbang once heard that there was an extraordinary major student in the Yuzhou Daoyuan class. He was a class C. But he could never have expected that the legendary genius was actually selling chives that the same morning. Lu Xu knew very well that he should have revealed his identity after Lu Xiaoyu was back. But even he could not explain why he was so annoyed by these people's vibes. He could have chided them for abandoning Xiaoyu and questioned their right to be Xiaoyu's brothers and father. But he did not want to. It was because he was crystal clear that the root cause was his selfishness. He did not want to let her go. Thus, those hypocritical excuses might as well be spared. It was his fault for being selfish, but he did not regret it. Still, it was not necessary to make amendments even if you were in the wrong. Everything was up to Xiaoyu. If Xiaoyu wanted to leave, he would respect her choice. But if she did not, no one could take her away. The day had come way too sudden for Lu Xu. He was just wondering, why did the three find them at their house without any prior notice? At that moment, they heard Xiaoyu's crystal-like laughter, Little Fury, did Lu Xu ask you to transplant chives today? Meng Yu walked outside the yard, looking at the adorable girl, his face lit up in happiness. He couldn't help but let out a cry, Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu raised her eyes, who are you? Don't be so over-familiar. Meng Yu gathered himself, a few years ago, your mom left you at the doorstep of an orphanage. Lu Xiaoyu immediately understood at this obvious hint. Her face was emotionless, then go. I'm fine now. If I have any family, Lu Xu is the only one. Her reply was crisp and non-negotiable, as though she had made up her mind long ago, regardless of the truth. The decision seemed way too rash for a little girl, but again given the circumstances it was as if it was only right. In this world, Lu Xiaoyu only trusted Lu Xu, and the rest was not important. Meng Yu was anxious, you don't believe me? 
Do you have a red mole behind your ear? Suddenly, Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu exchanged a startled look, but he could not figure out why. Grinning, Lu Xu went back to his room and returned with his spears on his shoulders, eyeing the three people with a smile. Lu Xiaoyu explained patiently, back then, I was jealous that people in the TV series had ear studs, so Lu Xu agreed to help me draw one with a red pen. But he accidentally drew it behind my ear, which was seen by the orphanage caregiver and she thought it was a mole. Therefore, there was no red mole behind her ear. She had washed it off a long time ago. Meng Yu immediately lowered his head and prepared to leave, we have got to go now. Lu Xu curled his lips, where are you going? The entirety of China has been emancipated. But at that moment, a voice mumbled in Lu Xu's heart, luckily it was a lie. And luckily, Lu Xiaoyu had made her choice. From Wang Qian's distress, plus 999. From Meng Yu. From. Chapter 369, Lu Xu the Killer. I appreciate your visit to the orphanage. My apologies for the trouble, Lu Xu smiled, his face eerily peaceful. Their lies were already exposed at the mention of the Red Mole. The slip in her swaddling clothes was known to all caregivers at the orphanage, which took good care of personal belongings for the kids and would return the items to their owners after they grew up. Lu Xu got back his pendant in the same way. As for the Red Mole, only Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu knew that it was their thanks to Lu Xu. Thus, if they had really found Lu Xiaoyu's birth mother, she would have never given this piece of wrong information. Lu Xu had seen a news article detailing Li Xianyi's extermination of a practitioner trafficking organization just a few days ago, and he had run into one today. No matter what hidden agenda they served, Lu Xu would expect the worst. Hence, the three people would soon be dead. Reflecting on the day's events, Lu Xu mulled over why he had trusted those people subconsciously, and overthought so much when they simply stood at his door. The reason was obvious, the conversation between the two young men at the fine art street. We are here to bring our younger sister home. The coincidence of their reappearance at night caught Lu Xu off guard. Nonetheless, it turned out to be a carefully considered trap. Lu Xu's promotion was always a well-known fact inside the Heavenly Network. But the network itself had strict confidentiality rules, and many who failed to keep secrets had been expelled as a warning. Therefore, they should know his identity if they were affiliated to a powerful external organization or turncoats inside the network. But in reality, they did not. They were scammers who tried to abduct Xiaoyu. According to the black market information given to them earlier, a number of gangs were engaged in illegal transactions involving not only magical stones and weapons, but also people with favorable aptitudes. It was completely unethical and intolerable. The two people's student-like appearance and peak of class E ability gave Lu Xu the wrong impression of typical Heavenly Network students, but they had never admitted it themselves. The incident had made Lu Xu wiser. Although he was a relatively mature man most of the time, admittedly there were deceptive gimmicks he had never seen before. However, they had chosen the wrong target. The middle-aged man Meng Yu was a commoner, and it remained unclear whether the other two were practitioners or metahumans. But, they were too weak. Meng Yunbang and Wang Qian's blood went cold. One of them suddenly conjured up a mirror-looking wall, and the other threw the other two over his shoulders and prepared to retreat. In fact, both of them were metahumans, not some Daoyuan-class students. Too weak. Composed, Lu Xu spoke, you, are really too weak. All of a sudden, Lu Xu's spears were in the air, and Meng Yunbang and Wang Qian crashed to the floor without a chance to catch their breath. Meng Yu was not much better either, as the mirror splintered into pieces under Lu Xu's attack. To kill, or not to kill, Lu Xu was in deep thought. He was not a killer. But the question was, what if Xiao Yu was really taken away by them? Maybe she would be fine. Under Anthony's protection, few could harm her. But what if she could not use her power, if she were only an ordinary little girl? They probably had heard of Lu Xiaoyu's aptitude or her talent as an animal whisperer at the Salt Lake Remain, which made her a profitable good, and hence the trap. 
Regardless, to Lu Xu, the three of them were unforgivable. Once he thought of what might have happened to Xiaoyu if she were a commoner girl, Lu Xu's inner peace was disrupted, as though a monster suddenly emerged from his serene mental lake, ready to devour the world. Maybe it was something buried deep in his heart, a beast that craved blood once awakened. For so many years, we are never apart. And now, you want to take her away just like this. Thus, I have to say, you probably have some misunderstandings with yourselves, and with me too. I don't really want to hand you over to the Heavenly Network, because I'm afraid they won't let you die. Lu Xu's mind was calmer and clearer by every second. He could be the Lu Xu that the breakfast vendor Uncle Li knew as someone who worked his way through school, or the unfriendly Lu Xu in his classmates' eyes. He was actually never a dangerous figure. Nothing would happen even if you had an argument with him. Even for someone like Li Dian, Lu Xu only viewed him as a normal scammer who tried his best chance at survival. In Lu Xu's opinion, Li Dian did not deserve to die despite his acts of cheating and stealing. At that moment, Lu Xu only wanted to give Lu Xiaoyu and himself a stable life. Innocent, maybe a little annoying at times, but not quite dangerous. But now, he was Lu Xiaoyu's Lu Xu. He would not think twice before staining his hands with blood if it was necessary for Lu Xiaoyu. I have killed so many, and I won't mind adding you to the list, Meng Yu and the other two were struggling on the floor. Lu Xu spared no mercy in his attack. Then, pointing the tip of the spear at Meng Yu's heart, Lu Xu suddenly exerted strength. Instantly, the air reeked of blood, a pool of purple-black liquid quickly collected beneath Meng Yu's stiffened body. Indeed, Lu Xu did not want to hand them over to the Heavenly Network, because they might not let them die. It was only then, that Wang Qian and Meng Yunbang realized how serious a mistake they had committed. In the past, they could flee when things went wrong, but now, they had never expected that this teenager would kill them without hesitation. Next, Wang Qian. Only blood could wash away the hatred in Lu Xu's heart. Yes, Lu Xu detested these three people who tried to sell Xiaoyu. Lu Xu whispered, discard the Class C, take their souls and look through their memories. One by one. Don't allow them the chance of reincarnation, though I'm not sure whether hell exists. Meng Yunbang could not understand his words, but he could feel his heart almost stop due to fear. At that moment, Li Yixiao suddenly appeared at the end of the lane. He came to persuade Lu Xu into that overseas expedition. But he immediately froze at the bloody scene, who are they? Don't kill them first. But Lu Xu completely ignored him, and his spear pierced through Mang Yunbang's heart. Then, he raised his head, his face emotionless, scammers who tried to abduct Xiaoyu. They deserve to die. Meanwhile, many neighbors were gathering outside, pointing their fingers at the site. Some of them were horrified, corresponding to a surge in Lu Xu's background distress points. Li Xiao cast a look at the crowd, it would be just fine if you killed them indoors. Now, you've brought bad public influence. I think you'd better follow me overseas and stay away from trouble. The point on public influence was pure bullshit. Since when was it part of Li Xiao's concern? After all, he still needed Lu Xu to help him earn money. Lu Xu shot him a calm look, okay. I'm going. Li Xiao did not know why his heart gave a throb at Lu Xu's glimpse. Lu Xu's killing affair was reported to the superiors one by one. But due to his extremely high military ranking, it was passed to the Luhai Lane of the capital for processing. After all, it was a serious misconduct in the cultivation realm to exert capital punishment on one's captives. Unexpectedly, however, Nia Ting did not say a word after scanning through the document and signed him noted. The person beside him was confused, so did he mean to punish or not? Just when he was about to ask, another person pulled him aside, don't need to ask. The heavenly king himself felt that they deserved to die. Sure Shua Jin drew a sudden inspiration. He went inside the room, rolled out his rice paper, and freely wrote down a line, a heart of gold and a fist of iron. Chapter 370, Clues of the Gold Lord 
The Heavenly Network called it Lu Xu's killing affair, the incident where Lu Xu killed the three scammers who tried to abduct his sister. Since it was witnessed by so many neighbors, the network was under immense pressure from public opinion, but it still exhausted all means to minimize its effect. As a matter of fact, no one inside the network who knew the actual situation faulted Lu Xu for his doings. Human traffickers deserve to die, they said. What was more, the fact that they wanted to sell Lu Xiaoyu, a girl with cultivation aptitude, made their act even more unforgivable. In addition, Heavenly King Chen's confidants were all aware that he wanted to accept Lu Xiaoyu as his apprentice. Thus, the matter infuriated Chen Bailey. Actually, the most enraged were the Heavenly Network fighters stationed on the Beimang Mountain. Did someone say they wanted to take Lu Xiaoyu away while they were giving her snacks all day? No way. For the entire month, a heated topic was widely discussed inside the Capitals and Beimang's network, well done, nice kill. All of a sudden, the public indignation was mounting rapidly. Was it not? Recently Lu Xiaoyu had not been to the mountains for a while all thanks to the bloody human traffickers. Now, they had no one to give their huge piles of snacks to. Soon, a group was formed on the Beimang Mountain, called Lu Xiaoyu's elder brothers and sisters, eager to protect Lu Xiaoyu personally. But Lu Xu did not know any of that. All he knew was the change in attitude of his neighbors. To tell the truth, they had witnessed practitioners' combats on the Golden Foundation Forum, but it still instilled fear when such violence happened in such close proximity. Therefore, Lu Xu's third star had been lit, and he was halfway towards the fourth. What was the most terrifying was Lu Xu's merciless killing when he had the chance to capture them alive. But that was none of Lu Xu's concern. He believed he was right. It was never on his mind how strangers might view him. People like to judge others with their own sets of principles due to one single reason, everyone thought that theirs was the sole truth. Lu Xu was more extreme in this aspect. His rules could never be shaken by others' opinions. If even the Heavenly Network disagreed with him, he would not think twice about migrating elsewhere with Lu Xiaoyu. They could leave underground with Anthony's help, their greatest trump card at the moment. Fortunately, the Heavenly Network sided with him without any hesitation. It was a strange yet amazing feeling that strangers came to support, approve and care for you as your comrades in arms. It was also something foreign to Lu Xu. But at that moment, he suddenly realized the network might really have a place for him. After dinner, Lu Xu happily led Lu Xiaoyu to the rooftop and sat at its edge. It was their favorite time of the day in the past. Watching the myriad of twinkling lights afar, the world felt small, as if there were the two of them only. Do you really have to go, Lu Xu? Lu Xiaoyu was curious. Yeah, the influence was bad. I need to leave for a while. It said the Heavenly Network is under pressure due to that too, Lu Xu explained. After that day, Li Yixiao had become an even more frequent guest at their house, as though the intensity had been escalating and Lu Xu should not stay any longer. Lu Xu was skeptical, was it really so serious? But Li Yixiao did not seem to be joking at all. Furthermore, Lu Xu did not want to cause the network too much trouble. As the center of attention, he must be considerate for their plight as well. As for Nye Ting, it was a timely event, like a much-needed pillow when he was feeling sleepy. The three ran into Lu Xu just when he was having difficulty trying to indirectly persuade the kid into the overseas remain. Moreover, it was not done for Lu Xu. Lu Xiaoyu's current ability only allowed two spirits to be incarcerated simultaneously. At first they were Anthony and a pig, which was later replaced with Class C Lu Dakuan at Tongguan. This time, Lu Xiaoyu captured Wang Qian, Meng Yunbang and Meng Yuan after the other to probe into their memories. After they had obtained all the information, she let them vanish into the air. Lu Xu was unsure whether reincarnation was real. If it was, he hoped they could never be reborn in this world. Sometimes violence is necessary to free one from sin, a thought suddenly struck Lu Xu, if the world could not give you justice, you need to earn it yourself. 
Lu Xu was, after all, a selfish person. He had always been. This time the memory obtained was rather complete as it was pieced together by three people's recollections. Lu Xu had made an educated guess. Indeed, they were unaffiliated scammers. Unexpectedly, though, the commoner named Meng Yu, whom Lu Xu had thought to be a puppet, actually had the highest position there. According to their original plan, they would take Lu Xiaoyu to the south, where she would be brainwashed and tamed by another group. Their accomplices were not that strong either, a handful of Class Ds. Lu Xiaoyu was a Class D based on their information, thus their evil plan was infallible if Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu were convinced of her background. Subsequently, they would smuggle Xiaoyu into Southeast Asia and sell her by auction on the Darkness Kingdom. Every time he thought of them auctioning Lu Xiaoyu, it made Lu Xu exasperated. But in return, Lu Xiaoyu would eye him with a smile. Lu Xiaoyu had become less naughty in this period of time. She volunteered to sell and harvest chives for Lu Xu, and even started doing house chores. She seemed to be in high spirits all day. On the other side, Lu Xu was notified of the confirmation of the three people's identities, which turned out to be already on the Heavenly Network's blacklist. Although their intentions were unclear, they would not get away from Yuzhou even if they had Lu Xiaoyu. Their accomplices in the South had been wiped out as well. But even so, Lu Xu's anger was not pacified. And it was at that time when Lu Xiaoyu dug out information about the person working behind the scene from Meng Yu's memory fragments. That would explain Meng Yu's exceptionally high status despite being a commoner. He was a representative of a gold lord downstream. Thus, Lu Xu was determined to pay a visit to Southeast Asia. Coincidentally, the remain was situated there too. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to 